I'm going to survive 100 days in Better Minecraft. Better Minecraft is a mod with extra biomes, scary dungeons, alternate dimensions, dangerous bosses, and so, so much more. And that sounds like a lot. Well, that's why I'm not gonna do this alone. Thankfully, for these 100 days, I'm gonna have my good friend blocked down by my side. With the two of us working together, I'm sure we can survive anything, right? Well, there's only one way to find out. So now that we're here, what should we do? Well, I guess we just gotta like gear up, maybe get some armor, get some tools, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so how about you go off in that direction and I'll go that way. All right, sounds good. I guess we'll meet back here in a couple of days. Good luck. Good luck, Bozo. Hey, so here we are on day one and I started how you would every Minecraft world by punching a tree. I made the basic tools I needed for survival and then I noticed this portal rune that was next to me. I took a look at the chest that was there and actually found quite a bit of good loot. The golden apples are a sweet bonus, but the gold armor will definitely come in handy for another trip. I then continued on in the direction of this beautiful looking autumn biome, but the weather quickly started to turn. Whoa, are these like gusts of wind or something? I'm not sure that's a good sign. Thankfully, I stumbled across a tower nearby and decided it would be a good idea to investigate it, but it looked like I might have some trouble getting to it with all these mobs spawning. I'm not sure if those were because of the rain or because the structure is actually a dungeon, but I felt like the risk could be worth it. After that fight, I found some sheep and I had to kill them to get some food so I could heal. Plus, I also figured that would give me some wool for a bed. I'm sorry, little sheep. So after that, I went to inspect the tower and quickly saw that it would be a safe space for me to stay. I began searching the barrels in here and found some iron, food, and pretty good tools. I then went up to the top of the tower to check out the view and ended up finding a chest with a waystone in it. I think those allow you to teleport if you have multiple placed around the world, so that should definitely come in handy. This area looks like it has a lot of cute places to explore nearby, so I feel like we should stay here for a while. Now that I had a cozy place to stay, I crafted up a furnace so I could burn the iron that I found. And once that was done smelting, I used that to make my very first iron pick. Very swag. All of that seemed like enough adventure for one day, so I hung out in that tower until morning. On the morning of day two, I set off to go find some more of our starter resources. I figured since we have a new pick, we should explore a nearby cave to see what we can gather. I found a lot of surface coal on the edge of the hill, so I spent some time gathering some of that. I found the entrance to a ravine and decided to head down in hopes of some more iron or maybe even diamonds. Ooh, I think those are emeralds. Nice. The cave I found though, yeah, not so nice. I think we're gonna have to pass on this one for now, especially since we don't even have any armor yet. Hopefully Blockdown's having some good luck in the caves though. He can help us gear up. But before I left, I decided to mine up a bunch of copper. And by a bunch, I mean far too much because I thought you could make copper armor with this mod pack. Yeah, turns out that's not a thing. So after that questionable use of my time, I decided to head back up to my base where I made a water bucket with some of the iron that I had. After seeing how brutal that cave was, I figured it would probably be a good idea to have one so we can more easily get down to the lower levels. And back up, of course. Also, we should probably upgrade these wooden tools to stone now. I was running around with an iron pick while everything else is made of wood. Like, huh? Okay, yeah, that is much better. After a not so successful day in terms of progress, I decided to spend the remainder of the day chopping down some trees. That's so cool. If you use an ax on one log, it'll chop the entire tree down. That is gonna save us so much time. So after having a more chill previous day, I decided that day three was going to be an exploration day. I can't forget I'm a modded, of course, so I wanted to see what cool things I could find. Like this little shell thing on the ground. Please don't break when I pick you up. Hey, what are you looking at? So after walking a little bit further, I came across a random bridge. As I approached it, I got stuck in those annoying berry bushes, only to realize that they were a little bit different. <gasps> are these blueberries? Oh, these are so cute. And also still kind of annoying when you walk over these things. After that, I made my way over to the bridge to check it out. I don't really know if these have any significance or if they're just randomly generated, but they're really pretty. After inspecting the random bridge, I noticed a campfire off in the distance, so I went to go check it out in hopes of there being a village. <gasps> yes, we've got cabins. So I spent some time poking around to see if I could find any good loot. Ooh, what's this little structure? Oh my gosh, there's a frying pan. Ooh, what is this? A basket? There's a cutting board? All of this kitchen stuff that I found was so cool, and I would love to actually try cooking with it, so obviously I had to take it from the villager. Sorry, Topaz. I was on my way out the door until I noticed the barrels look different too. Oh, it's a cabinet. Ooh, there's onions. I bet we can plant these at home. And naturally, I took the cabinets from the villager as well, leaving him nothing but an empty room. I found a couple more houses in the village, but they didn't really have anything worth taking. My inventory had gotten quite full, so I decided to head on home. Along the way, I managed to see some cool wildlife. 
Little bears. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Can bear swim? Can bear swim? It's still chasing me. I can hear it. Ooh, is the water gonna stop it? No, oh, we can swim. Once I had passed the river, I ran for safety to my tower in hopes that this bear isn't like a super bear with spider like powers. And yes, I did break the ladder in case it could climb. Once I climbed to the top of the tower and saw that I was in safe distance from the bear, I could finally relax. I was still a little bit shaken up from that debacle, so much that I'd lost my footing and fell from the top of the tower, bringing me down to half of my hearts. I decided that was enough adventure for one day and went to bed early. On day four, it was time for me and Blockdown to meet back up to see what each other had managed to find. So I head back over to the spot where we started this adventure. Hey, buddy. How'd you uh, do with everything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Lockdown told me that he had only managed to find a little bit of food, but he did find a totem in a village. And I told him about the spot I had found and how it had a lot of good potential for a base location. So we head back over to the tower together to check it out. Oh, this is pretty. Right? Yo, what's this thing? Is this a dungeon or something? There was actually no mobs in here. It looked like just a landmark or something. I'm not exactly sure, but there was tons and tons of loot in here. Oh, this is cute. Oh, a bed. Look in here. Ooh. Oh, gold armor. A waystone? Yo, waystone. I found a waystone with a village. You did? Yeah, yeah. I like activated it and everything. So if we place that, we could easily go to the village. This area does seem pretty cozy, right? I mean, are we going to live here? I feel like this is the spot if you're into it. Yeah, I'm down. So now that we had the perfect spot picked out for a base, we decided it would be a good idea to start gathering more resources for basic survival. What the hell is that down there? Where? It's a fly with a green butt. I'm pretty sure that's a dragonfly. Have you never seen one? IRL. They're majestic. Mm -hmm. no. Side note, I meant to say fireflies, but you get the point. You can't just make up creatures. Oh, there's moss in here. With the storm picking up, we took up shelter for the night in the tower. On day five, we both head out to collect some resources. Lockdown went to gather some stuff from the caves while I began collecting leather from cows and chopping some wood. I needed more leather from cows because I wanted to make a backpack that would allow me to stash more items while traveling, but they weren't really dropping any. I was starting to worry that there would be none left, so I decided to make a pen for them instead. That way we could start farming as many as we needed for food and leather. <gasps> You can make diagonal fences? Oh, that's so cool. And after I built the pen, I set out to find some cows. Hiya, buddy. Come here. The cows in Modded are so cute. I love how there's so many different kinds too. With one cow safely in the pen, I went out to find some more so we could breed them. I ended up finding an area where three of them were hanging out next to each other. So I brought the whole gang back with me. Just this way, my dudes. Single file. There we go. So with all of our cows safely in the pen, I gave them some food. I kind of realized that I made the pen a bit too small and I felt a little bad, so I expanded it a little bit more. Yeah, that's much better. So for the remainder of the day, I built a pen next to the cows to prepare for our sheep friends. On day six, I set out early to find some more sheep. And I found one hanging out in a forest not too far from the base. <gasps> the bears. Avoid eye contact. Once I was back at the base, I got the sheep into the pen and set out to find some more. There's one. No, two. Oh, and it looks like we found another friend. Let's go. And here's your new home, my dudes. I hope you like it. After the sheep were safely in their new home, I wanted to work on getting a backpack for some extra storage. I needed one more piece of leather, but none of the cows were dropping any. I didn't want to risk losing all of my cows, so I had to go find one. Once I got the piece of leather that I needed, I went back home and made my backpack. So I think what you can do is you can actually equip it on you. And then to use the inventory slots, you right click when it's in your hotbar, and then you can access the extra line of inventory. Oh, this actually looks so cute too. I love it. Plus this will definitely come in handy for big adventures. After I got the backpack figured out, I decided it would be smart to work on getting other sources of food. We'll be needing some wheat to feed the animals, so I decided to make a little field close by for our crops. It's good to get a supply up now so we don't run out in the future. On day seven, Blockdown said he found a really cool cave that we should explore together sometime. It was a little bit far from home, so I set up a waystone at our base while he put one in the cave. That way we can more easily travel between the two places with the cost of some XP. After that, I made some shears because I wanted to see what kind of wool the sheep I had gotten would drop. What is this? A blue stitched wool. How does this look as carpet? Ooh, this could be really nice for building. I love that. And since I had some more time to spare, I decided to make our farmland look a little bit nicer by fencing in our crops. I then added some pathing to connect the area together a bit more. Towards the end of the day, Blockdown came back from his journey. Drift, I'm home. You're back. You're all geared up. Yeah, I got something for you. Bam. 
Blocked out, I managed to find enough iron to fully gear up and had some spare to make a chest plate for me, which you can equip with your backpack still on. So with the start of a sustainable food source and some gear, we were making some good progress, which led us into day eight. Now that we had more things, we kind of needed a bigger place to live and keep our stuff. We thought it would be cool to attach the build to the tower that I had found, but the problem was that we didn't exactly have enough resources to begin building just yet. So we took a trip into the caves using our waystone and collected a bunch of various stones to build with. We grabbed a ton of cobble for the foundation of our build and some andesite so we could use it to texture. And on day nine, we started building up the house. Walkdown built the footprint of the build with cobble while I textured the walls with some andesite. Once the foundation was done, I went into the surrounding forest to try and find some modded wood blocks that I haven't used before. I found this really nice gray maple wood that Blockdown would end up using for the roof trim. On days 10 to 12, we continued with our build. I built up the walls with this really nice salmon colored wood that we found. While Blockdown was working on the roof and storage, I started decorating the exterior. And I found out you can make actual shutters in this mod pack. They're basically trap doors that open and close sideways. And after that, I decorated the rest of the exterior with some planter boxes made from leaves and trap doors. Look at this house though, it's actually pretty cool, you know? No, it actually looks pretty good. There's a bee going in at the top of the tower. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Do you want to see what I did on the inside? Just prepare yourself. This is probably the best interior you're ever going to see in your life. Wait, after you, after you. Whoa! I mean, minus mm -hmm. the fact that I cannot see in these corners. Hold on, let's just fix that really quickly. Just add a little bit of lighting. This looks pretty good. As you can see, I've organized everything. Oh, that looks great. This is this is organization to my liking. This is perfect. And then uh, upstairs, we've got a lovely area for um, activities and stuff. Okay, need a little Whatever. bit of light here and there too, but it's looking good. It's looking good. So with the build done, we now had a proper place to call home, which was a big goal checked off of our list. We decided that the next thing we should do is get some better gear for ourselves, but that would be a tomorrow problem. On day 13, we set off to the caves because it was time to upgrade our gear. Our goal was to gather diamond for armor and a pick, some extra iron for general use, and some gold for the nether. Before we head out, I smelted the iron that we had and made the rest of my iron armor, so at least I had some protection while caving. Honestly, anything is better than nothing, especially because we don't really know what we're in for with the modded caves. Like this little goblin that's following block down. What? So with the little goblin guy by our side, down into the depths of the cave we went. We got down to deep slate level where you tend to find the most diamonds, but unfortunately we were having quite a bit of trouble finding any. We didn't really see too many modded dungeons either. Just a zombie wearing a mining outfit? Who was guarding a diamond though? And yeah, not diamonds plural, just one. But hey, it was better than nothing. On day 14, we kept exploring through the caves and we did manage to find a spawner room that was modded. It had some extra decorations and loot, which was really cool. We were still having no luck with diamonds, but we did manage to find a huge iron vein, which is honestly a great find. This will give us a great supply of iron for whatever we needed it for. So thankfully, iron was no longer a worry. We gathered up as much as we thought we needed and went on to try and find some more diamond. And yeah, still no luck with the diamonds. Finally, I managed to break our bad streak of luck by finding two diamonds. So that brought us up to three. In our midst of travel, we came across a giant zombie dungeon that was held up by pillars. It was probably a horrible idea to explore, but who knows, there could be some good loot in it. So we made the most irresponsible choice that we could and we made our way up into the dungeon. And yeah, as we suspected, it was pretty hairy. I spent all my time running away from zombies like a little baby while Blockdown managed to find a diamond sword, enchanted book, and some other cool stuff. I definitely owe him for that one. After running through the dungeon, collecting whatever loot we could find while narrowly avoiding chaos, we finally pillared up to escape and get back to the surface. Oh, we are underwater. We figured that was enough adventure for us, so we head on home. Sadly, with barely any luck in the caves, we were on to day 15 with not many diamonds to our name. We spent the morning smelting some iron and putting away items into storage. We figured today we could do some other things to prep for the dragon fight and go back to the diamond collecting later. This meant that the next step for us would be to take a trip to the nether for some important materials. So we made a diamond pick with a few diamonds we had so we can mine some obsidian for a portal. After that, we were off to the caves to find a lava pool. Along the way, we found a witch hut that actually had a brewing stand in it. That was a great find because we needed one to brew potions for the dragon fight. We also came across a group of scarecrows just sitting silently in a circle. That was a little bit terrifying, but we also needed the hay for farming, so we took their torsos and we ran. We finally got to the entrance of the cave and took a water bucket down to begin our search for a lava pool. Oh, <gasps> there's lava and obsidian. Oh no, there's a creeper! Ah! Oh, I hate it here. After my heart rate went back to normal, I had the thrilling task of mining obsidian. Oh, 
Well, that was a great start. Once we had collected all that we needed, we traveled back to our base and made the portal in the upstairs room of our build. Yay. We took a peek just to see what biome we were landing in, and it was enough for me to never want to go back. I thought the regular nether was bad enough, but yeah, modded was way worse. We popped back through the portal to collect a few more things in the overworld for this trip and went to bed. I wasn't looking forward to this trip before, but now I can say with confidence that I'm really not looking forward to it. Days 16 and 17 were spent on the dreaded nether trip. I got a gold helmet on so piglins don't attack me, and I also upgraded my backpack so I could have more inventory. Upgrading to the gilded backpack gave me a full 27 slots of extra space. Once that was all done, I couldn't find other things to do to avoid heading into the nether, so we went back through the portal. Our first step was to make it off of these hanging mushrooms by pillaring across them. Once we were on safer terrain, we just head in a random direction in hopes that we would find a fortress. Some Minecraft god must have heard me crying in my sleep the other night and had taken pity on me because there was literally one right around the bend from us. Now that we found a fortress, we could collect blaze rods to craft blaze powder, which we combined with the ender pearls to make the eyes of ender to open the end portal. The only tricky part is, well, we need to survive this thing. I mostly ran around like a baby panicking and begging for my life because I couldn't stop being lit on fire by the blaze, but eventually I was able to help gather more than enough blaze rods. Once we got a good amount, I mean once Blockdown got us a good amount, we did a little bit more exploring of the fortress for some extra loot than we were on our way to find a warped forest for enderpearls. Days 18 and 19 consisted of looking for a warped forest and gathering Ow. enderpearls for the final piece to the portal keys. Aw oh man, no pearl? This process can be pretty tedious, especially because the pearls don't always drop, so it took quite a bit of killing endermen after endermen after endermen. Also, while digging into netherrack to make a safe spot, I managed to find a couple pieces of ancient debris. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but that was a pretty lucky find. After killing a bunch of endermen, we ended up with about 18 pearls in total. We were hoping that would be more than enough to lead us to the stronghold and to open it because we were getting pretty sick of this place. With all of those pearls collected, we headed back to the portal and to the safety of our home. Oh, it feels so good to be back. On day 20, we were finally back in the overworld and I couldn't be happier. I spent the day keeping things a little bit more chill. I decided to start gathering books so I can make an enchanting table for us to upgrade our gear while Blockdown left to go build us a zombie XP farm. These two things will allow us to get good enchanted armor as soon as possible, making us one step closer to being able to fight the dragon. I was able to use some of the bookshelves that were in the tower as there were quite a few. I then combined the books with some obsidian and diamonds that we had and got us a shiny new enchanting table. Once I had made that, I set it aside and I spent the rest of the day tearing apart the remainder bookshelves in the tower and gathering some wood from the forest so I could remake them. I really wish I had silk touch on this axe. But hey, that's what the table's gonna be for. On day 21, I continued with making bookshelves for the enchanting table. While gathering some spruce for this build, I found some grapes in the forest nearby. They looked pretty delicious, so I kept them. I then started collecting some mossy cobble, leaves, and some granite to use for the build I was gonna do around the table. I wasn't exactly sure what I would be doing with the build just yet, but those are really nice blocks that pair well together, so you can't go wrong. I had gotten most of what I needed for this build and the weather was pretty crummy, so I went to bed. Which got us to day 22, where I got to work on building a spot for the table. I wanted to keep the table relatively close to our base so we could easily access it. I took a look around close by and thought this modded forest we were in looked pretty magical, so I decided to build the table outdoors. After working on clearing out a patch of land, I got to work on the build. I used cobble for the base and built up the roof of the gazebo with granite, spruce, and leaves. I then placed the full table down and we officially had a place to enchant our gear. Plus, I think the build turned out really cute. On day 23, Blockdown had come back from building the XP farm. Ooh, this is pretty. I like it. <gasps> really? Thanks. So now that we have those two things settled, really all we need are the diamonds to get good gear. Yeah, I don't really want to enchant iron gear. Uh, strip mine? Yeah, let's strip mine. So off we went back down to the mines with the hopes that we would actually get something this time around. We started off by digging a big old staircase all the way down until we hit near the bottom of the caves. And then we began the slow but very safe task of strip mining. And boring. You've got to admit that it's just kind of boring sometimes. After strip mining the rest of the day away, we still actually had no luck whatsoever with diamonds. Which led us into day 24. Our full day in the strip mine resulted in nothing, so we thought we would try our luck enchanting a diamond pick with Fortune 3 so we would get more when we actually find diamonds. I mean, if we ever find any at this point. For some reason, we both went to the XP farm, but we quickly realized it would be a waste of time for one person to watch the other collect XP. So I traveled back to the mines in hopes of finding diamonds while blocked down AFK'd for 30 levels. 
and for a brief moment, we actually did have some luck. I finally found my first diamond in the mines. I did, however, decide to leave it until we got our fortune pick, which is where our bad luck came back. Hi. <laughs> I'm breaking free efficiency four. So with one diamond found and still no enchanted pick, day 25 rolled around and we were back to the caves determined to get these diamonds. Lockdown had spent some time gathering enough levels from the XP farm so he attempted to enchant his pick again. And finally, with a little bit of luck on our side, Blockdown managed to get fortune three, which makes our lives so much easier. Lucky. How many is this? 13 already? Mm -hmm. Wait, did mm -hmm. you get the ones that I had marked out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went and grabbed those. Oh, perfect. Okay, well, all we need to do is find just a couple more clusters and we're good. So day 26 came around and we were hopefully near the end of all this mining. Lockdown had way more luck than I did. However, I did manage to find a good cluster. Oh. Seven. What? Yes. What? Yes. So with a bit of perseverance, we finally got all the diamonds we needed and made our full diamond armor. However, I still personally feel a little bit unlucky because I only found like one cluster and then another diamond, but it's fine. I'll take it. Lockdown can have all the luck as long as he shares it with me. We also had enough diamonds for us to fully upgrade our tools, so we did that as well. And with all of that done, we could finally head out of the caves and back up to the surface. I really missed the fresh air. On day 27, our next step was to enchant our gear. I didn't have quite enough levels for that yet. So off I went to block down zombie XP farm where I spent the rest of the day and all of day 28 gaining levels. And he fished. Like literally, for two days he fished. I got to level 34 and I figured that was a good amount if I wanted to enchant at least two items. So I head on home. Day 29 rolled around and I finally had the required number of levels and a bit more to get the full enchantments on a couple of important pieces of gear. I chose to upgrade my sword and my chest plate as I thought those were two pretty important items. After that, I had some time to spare, so I decided to explore the area around us a little bit more. I wanted to build a potion house, so I thought it would be cool to find some magical, colorful looking blocks. I came across a forest with really tall blue trees with pink leaves, and I thought those fit the bill perfectly. I collected a bunch of wooden leaves for the rest of the day, and then I head back home. Days 30 to 33 were spent on building the potion house. But before that, Blockdown offered a spare sword to me that had sharpness on it. I combined it with mine and got a really powerful sword. The only problem was it had knockback, which isn't my favorite enchantment. But other than that, it was a really good sword. After that, I began building up the potion house for the next couple of days. While I was building, phantoms ended up spawning, which was very fitting considering phantom membrane is one of the ingredients we need for the slow falling potion. It was almost like they knew. I ended up incorporating that light blue wood that I found into the roof and I think it turned out looking really magical. And here's the build all done. I think it looks super cute. I decorated the interior with a bunch of modded blocks that I've never used and I think this looks really cool as well. And most importantly, we now have a spot to brew potions that we'll be needing later on. With better gear and a lot more confidence gained, we set out on day 34 for an adventure. In Better Minecraft, there are a lot more random structures and above ground dungeons, so who knows what we are bound to come across. Our adventure took us to an ice biome where we encountered a magic man just kind of hanging out on his own. That made me feel like this guy was going to be easy to take on, but yeah, no. Oh my gosh. Ooh, Titan of Freezing. Ooh! <laughs> you did. I thought I was gonna be toast having to go get all my stuff back, but this mod pack makes it really easy. Bruh, rip. Oh, yes, it's all back on. That's so cool. After I'd gotten all my stuff back, we continued on until we came across a pillager outpost. Honestly, there were far too many pillagers with what little loot it would have, so we just dipped, which led us straight to what looked like a woodland mansion, except ice. Yeah, this thing was literal ice. Like ice was even hidden in the carpet, so walking around was even a mess. We poked around and honestly didn't see anything worthwhile in the chest and just left before things got too hairy. Determined to find any type of structure with some good loot, we pressed on to day 35. We came across a lonesome cabin and in it was another one of those scary magic men. Watch, I'm oh, oh, I'm dead. you're gonna be back at spawn. Oh no, I set my spawn. Well, he's smarter than I am. I still had the bad omen on me from the pillagers and I was desperate to get rid of it. So I wanted to see if you could get milk from a goat. And I was, oh, they do. I swear I learned something new about this game every time I play. The next thing we came across was a giant ice castle and village, which seemed innocent enough. Oh my gosh, look at the map. This went exactly how you would expect. Oh! 
I'm just gonna run. I'm just gonna run, oh, man. There's so many after you. While running for my life, I actually managed to grab a waystone, which was a huge win for us. The pillagers seemed to be endless, so eventually we just called it quits and ran away. On days 36 and 37, we continued exploring. After running for our lives for most of this adventure with no good loot found, we still weren't quite ready to head home yet. And we found the one thing that made it all worth it. This sled. <laughs> oh my god, that's okay. <laughs> oh! Oh, guys, over the snow! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Oh, oh god! I okay. went off. After that, we honestly didn't really find too much else. We saw some cool biomes and gathered some nice looking resources, but that was about it. On days 38 and 39, we were back at home and it was time for us to get to work. After an adventure with lots of fun chaos but little reward, we thought it would be a good idea to get a mob farm together. This farm will give us some really valuable resources like bows, bones, and most importantly gunpowder so we can craft rockets if we get an elytra. Not if when. So we spent those two days gathering resources for the build. On days 40 to 41, we set out with our collected resources and built a mob farm close to our base. Big shout out to Shulkercraft for this really useful mob farm. I'll link the tutorial in the description if anyone would like to use it. With the tasks split up, we built this thing with ease. Oh! Did you miss it? Yeah. With the mob farm complete, on days 42 and 43, we AFK'd high above the clouds, hoping to collect a bunch of loot by the end of it. On the morning of day 44, we hopped down from our AFK spot and into a river. Oh, please. I'm making it. I can't even go see on. it. Should I do it? Should I do it? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> oh, God. No. Oh, God. no, please. <laughs> oh, so close. That it's was really actually close. close. Now that we had a good stock of arrows and gunpowder, we decided the next best step for the dragon fight would be villager trading for mending and unbreaking books so our elytras don't break as soon as we get them. We traveled to a close by village and I set up stick trades for emeralds while blocked down rolled librarians for the books that we needed. The tedious task of villager trading went exactly oh how you no, would no, expect. The no! And after quite a few days of this process, it took us into day 47 where we finally got the books that we needed. With some spare time left in the day, I made some potions of slow falling for our dragon fight. On day 48, we made the final preparations to go fight the dragon. My original diamond pick was really close to breaking, so I just made a new one. Lockdown gave me an enchanted bow with power one, and I enchanted all of my diamond gear with whatever I could. I actually managed to get feather falling two on my boots, which was a huge bonus. Once all our gear was enchanted, we combined the ender pearls with blaze powder to make the eyes of ender. And lastly, I made a couple extra golden apples with some gold we had laying around because why not? And on day 49, with everything ready, we head out to finally find the stronghold. We tossed our first eye to see where to begin and head off in that direction. We came across a tower just like the one at our base and found a waystone in it. This would be really useful for traveling back home from the end. Tossing eyes here and there to make sure we were still going the right way, we continued on our search which eventually led us to a swampy biome. After tossing some eyes just to confirm it was actually here, it looked like the stronghold could be under the swamp. So we began digging down in hopes that it was actually there. Oh, it's here. Nice. We're in. Whoa! Oh, okay. ho, 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 ho. That was very lucky that we landed where we did. Okay, yeah, that could have been so much worse. Oh, God. Well, I guess I no longer have to worry about getting down. So now that we were finally here, we just had to find the portal. And searching for it took us into day 50. <gasps> Library. Whoa, look at this creeper. It's like a mossy creeper, dude. Sorry, dude, but you're still deadly. After searching for a while and getting turned around here and there, I finally found the portal room. We made sure to be smart by setting spawns and popping down a waystone. Not that we're gonna need it or anything. The only thing left to do was put the eyes in the portal and open this thing up. Whoa. Oh, 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 right. Let's hope for a good spawn. Dude. Hope for a good spawn. Couldn't have done this without you. Yeah, I know. Um, I fell in the lava and uh, the server had a little bit of trouble, but it was all good in the end and nothing was fatal. With just our luck, we spawned off the island and had to bridge across while my pinky was absolutely shaking from holding crouch. But we made it safely across and it was finally time to do this. We started off by destroying all the crystals on the towers and I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of in the zone and easily knocking these things down. I'm especially proud of these two long distance shots. Swag, once we had managed to break them all, it was time to hit the dragon until she was down. And all of this had brought us into day 51, where after a couple more good hits with our bows and swords, the dragon had finally been defeated. Oh, this is it, this is it. This is yes. it. Yes. yes, yes. Let's go, baby. Yo, let's go. 
We did it. We did it, homie. We both managed to collect a wicked amount of XP from that, and after that, we grabbed the prize dragon egg. Although we really wanted Elytras, we thought it might be a better idea to go home first to get better gear before we take on the end cities. Once back home, we both took some time to re-enchant our gear with some better enchantments. I had decided to disenchant my sword because knockback was driving me nuts, but I would soon come to regret that decision terribly. I don't know what I was thinking. Getting rid of a sword with looting was such a bad idea, but it's too late now. And just like that, we were on to day 52. Dude, I feel really sick. I ate something not great. You know those, you know those ender pearls that we got earlier? I took a bite of one. Oh god, I'm starting to feel a bit. Ugh. Did you eat one too? Oh, yeah. So now with the dragon fight done, we decided our next task should be building up an enderman farm so we could more easily gain levels to enchant or get levels back if we die, which uh, we all know I have a habit of doing. So we both divided up the resource collecting to make this thing, and I set out for the rest of the day to gather up a ton of leaves and shear a bunch of sheep for wool. From days 53 to 55, we got everything in our bags and set out to build up our enderman farm. We grabbed our waystone for easier travel and realized that we could also use them between dimensions. Not only will that make travel to the Enderman farm easier, but it will also make going to the end a lot easier as well. So we spent the next few days building up the Enderman farm with all the resources we had collected. Another big shout out to Shulkercraft for this farm design. It was super quick to put up and works really well. Once it was all done and working, we stuck around and leveled up to a good amount and then head on home where I was able to enchant some more items. Finally, we were confident enough to go explore the end, so from days 56 to 58, we set out on a new adventure. We crafted up some rockets for our future elytras, and I also made a shield to combat those pesky shulkers. We tried to enchant a bow that would have infinity on it, but we didn't really have much luck. After a visit to our enderman farm for more levels to give it a few more shots, we still didn't have any success in getting the enchantment. So we decided to give up on that dream and just go to the end. Once we were back, we bridged our way over to the end portal to see what would await us. Okay. Yeah, this place definitely wasn't the end I was familiar with. It actually looked really beautiful, but I knew it wasn't to be trusted. That still didn't stop me from taking my sweet time collecting things I'll probably never use. And shortly after, the first terrifying end monster finally appeared and it was these giant bull things that did a ton of damage. I give this monster a 3 out of 10 because it was mean, but it did drop meat and stuff that could be turned into netherite scrap. And please don't ask me what my rating system is because I don't know. The next thing we came across was a spawner that had some diamond ores laying around, so that was pretty sweet. Determined to find an end city, we continued on while being mildly distracted by all the cool blocks. We stumbled upon an end city mineshaft that we had to stop and check out because that's just so cool. And that's when I met my untimely fate. One of those monsters must have heard about the bad rating I gave them and decided to take matters into their own hands by yeeting me off a cliff. And all I have to say is that we were so smart to pack those waystones because I was able to punch a few endermen for levels so I could use one that blocked down a place by my grave. Easy peasy. So after that whole debacle, we now meant business and we had our sights on finding that end city. With enough bridging across the void to make me not want to do that again for a while, we finally found one. We wasted no time and pillared up to the ship. And there it was. The elytra we had set out to find. We finally had one. And bonus, Elytras and Better Minecraft already have mending and unbreaking on them, so we didn't even have to worry about that after all. So Blockdown had the honors of using it first because he set out to explore the end to find a second one for us. I stayed back and looted everything I could from this ship and the city. After having some annoyances with the shulkers, I was able to find a section within the structure that had fully intact shulker boxes. Blockdown had eventually made his way back with an elytra for me. And finally, I could fly. We decided that was enough time spent in the end and we took our waystone home. On day 59, I decided to spend the day at the Enderman farm in hopes to fix my sword, but I had no such luck. After that big end adventure, we wanted to chill out for a bit, so on day 60, we decided to do some work around the base. I felt like the animals needed a nicer place to live, so I set out to build a barn while Blockdown built us some automated storage. I wanted to use some more modded blocks, and while I was in the end, I noticed this really nice dusty purple tree. So yeah, I went back for it even though a moment ago I was saying I had enough of that place. On day 61, my axe had gotten pretty worn out from chopping down all those trees, so I went to the Enderman farm for a quick repair. Once I was back home, I cleared out a spot for the barn on top of this hill and started building. 
On day 62 to 66, I continued working on the barn and farmland. I built the roof using some of that wood I found in the end, and I love how it pairs with the spruce. I added details to the outside of the build and started a path leading into the barn. I then placed some fencing to give the cows outdoor space and added some decorations to blend the build into the landscape a little bit more. Once that was all done, I got the cows into the barn and the sheep into a pen beside them. I then added some crops to the surrounding area. I also made these really cool looking oil lanterns to add spots of light to the build. On day 67, we were both done with our builds and showed each other what we had done. Ooh, what's this? Oh, hey, buddy. What's going on, dude? Welcome. What is this? Why is this so ominous? This is a brand new storage system. Have you been in the old house recently? It's, uh, it, it's empty. What? <gasps> it, it's, it's not in here. Is it all in here then? Yep, it's all in that one tiny little block. Oh my gosh, okay. Whoa! So if I search Ender Pearls, uh -huh. I got them. What? Yeah. And does that mean I can put them away too? Yep. Yeah. Just uh, shift click it in there. <gasps> and it all just gets organized by itself. This is incredible. Oh my gosh. You solved all of our sorting issues. I mean, not we we obviously were pretty organized in there anyway, but I thought, well... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we were totally organized. It's just the fact that it could have gotten out of hand. It could have. Yeah, but it, it didn't. You know, eventually, probably, like, it was a mess, all right? It, it, it needed sorting. No, it was pretty bad. It was actually pretty terrible. <laughs> so after Blockdown showed me his brilliant time-saving sorting machine, I showed him, well, the pretty spot I had built for our animals. Hey, aesthetics matter too, okay? Plus, we now know how to make those really cool looking oil lanterns. So I think that's a win. All right, so now that we're done that, what should we what should we do now? Well, I'm thinking we've done quite a bit of building. The base is expanding. How about another adventure? Yeah. Okay, where, where are you thinking? How about we do something a bit more, you know, better Minecraft? All right. Have heard of the Twilight Forest? I've heard scary things about it, but I mean, we've conquered everything else, so I think we could do it. I mean, we're pretty geared up. I say the only thing we probably need before we go is maybe a few more rockets, which means we've got to go stand up there. So off we went back to our AFK farm, which led us into day 68, where we stood up in the sky for the day to collect gunpowder for rockets. On day 69, we made our way down to collect all the loot from our AFK farm and head back home to craft the rockets. We also went over to a nearby village to grab an extra waystone. Once we were back home, we picked out a spot for this portal. To access the Twilight Forest, you need to make a square of water surrounded by flowers and throw a diamond in it. Okay, uh, let's go. Oh my god! Oh. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna do anything. And off we were to see what this dimension was all about. So we landed in a field with tons of strange structures all around, and there was no sunlight, only dark skies. I mean, it is in the name, Twilight. Not sure what I expected, but yeah, this checks out. We flew around a bit trying to figure out what we needed to do next. Some places it was obvious weren't meant to be accessed just yet by having barriers around them, while others had things like acid rain to stop you from going into an area. Feeling a little bit lost, we had to do a quick Google search to find out you needed to craft something called a magic map focus using a raven feather, glowstone dust, and torch berries. Then you combine that with a map, and that would give you a special map leading you to the bosses that you had to fight. So we set off to explore, and we came across a maze that ended up having a bunch of spider spawners and basic loot. Feeling like there had to be something bigger than this, we pressed on to day 70, where the map led us to an even bigger maze that looked quite more ominous than the last one. We set our sights on a giant snake within the maze and knew this was a boss that we had to fight. And, uh, surprisingly, it was pretty easy. I gotta be honest, I was not expecting the snake to go down that quickly. We collected its loot, which was a trophy head and some scales you could make armor with. Feeling pretty confident after that, we head over to the next boss fight, which was in the tower back by our portal that no longer had a barrier on it. And at the very top of the tower was the Twilight Lich, the next boss we had to conquer. This one was a little bit trickier because he would create copies of himself, and if you hit the fake one, there would be no damage taken. But overall, yep, this one was pretty easy too. Man, are we just that good at this game? Oh! Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. So after we had gotten the loot, which was a cool magic staff and a trophy, we were on to day 71, where the next boss would be hidden in the depths of an underground maze. Oh, this is gonna be hard to get out of. Not being able to use our elytra to scope things out from above, we were stuck running through trying to find where the next boss was located. To make things worse, this place was also home to these half-man, half-cow creatures that would charge at you with axes. They honestly didn't do that much damage and were pretty easy to take down, but they were just creepy. Why, why did these things exist? Why? The one saving grace of this place, I would say, was that there was tons of loot in here. Ooh. Ah! Oh my god! Oh! What? But 
some of it was rigged with TNT, so you know what? That kind of sucked too. After running around multiple levels of this maze while trying our best not to get lost, we finally made our way to what looked like the boss room. This is it? Weak, 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 come on. We did it. We did it? Really? That was it? In the loot chest was another trophy, a cool axe that Blockdown took, and some Meef Stroganoff, which was kind of a weird thing to have in the chest. But I'm assuming it was to be consumed for the next boss, so I took some. With having the third boss defeated without any trouble, we were feeling pretty good about ourselves, and we figured we should take on at least one more boss, which led us into day 72. Tastes kind of peppery. We figured we had been doing so well through all of this, so how hard could the next one be? Oh, what? You want me to defeat a three-headed dragon? Oh, I'm so scared. Oh god, how do you hit it? Ah! Oh no, this is bad. This is bad. I'm hiding. Okay, maybe I was a little bit too confident just a few moments ago. I'm hiding behind a pillar. I'm hiding behind a pillar. Do you think it sees me? Oh god. Ah! Hey, ah! It hit so hard, dude. Ah! Oh! My skin oh god, was back. ripped off. <laughs> it's, a, it's a message I got. It says my skin was ripped off. So, uh, yeah. I definitely take back everything I said about this place being easy. So I spawned back in the overworld, but luckily earlier on I had equipped a charm that would allow me to keep my armor when I died. So the only thing I had to do was kill some sheep to get some XP for the waystone and run for my life to get the rest of my items back. Just, hi, just coming in to get my stuff. Don't mind me. <laughs> I'm not gonna right. run, I'm gonna run, oh my god. So later on, we found out that being the idiots we are, we were doing this boss fight all wrong, which made it a hundred times more difficult and extremely deadly. So deadly that oh, even oh. Blockdown had been taken down. Bruh, no, you died. <laughs> what? Did you just fly into something? And this is where things went all wrong. Neither of us were able to locate the grave that had been generated for Blockdown to retrieve his items. We searched everywhere. We searched up top, we dug down low, but in the end, it could not be found. After taking quite a bit of time to look around with no luck, we had to take the L and just go home. Thanks for nothing. You ruined my day. And my life. Ah! On day 73, we were back at home and we figured that was enough adventuring for a while. Blockdown borrowed my sword so he could get some more XP to gear back up, and I spent some time tending to our crops and farm animals. After that, I went out to go gather up a bunch of clay for a stove because the next thing I wanted to try in this mod pack was Farmer's Delight, which is the cooking mod that allows you to make intricate meals. At the end of the day, Blockdown came back and borrowed my elytra and some rockets so he could go back to the end and get another one for himself. Good luck, buddy. On day 74, I set out to start learning the cooking mod. However, in order to give this mod a shot, we actually needed a kitchen. So I decided to convert our old storage room into one because it was the perfect amount of space, but now we also had a use for this building again. So I built up some counter space with some cabinets above, and I learned you can make these really cool hoods for your stove. All of this decorating took me into day 75 where I continued on with the kitchen build. I made a cutting board that I assume we'll be able to use. I decorated the kitchen with this cool looking rope. I placed a cute little spot for herbs. And then I made one more stove so we could have a cooking pot displayed. And I think this turned out really nice. Day 76 was time for me to finally try out the mod while Blockdown went to explore a new dimension called Paradise Lost, which means he built yet another cursed portal in the upstairs of this house. Oh, whoa, th this is gonna be a dining room, man! He also sent this giant random bird back through the portal. I don't know what to do with this guy. Maybe it can be my sous chef or something. With a whole big kitchen built, I realized I didn't really have many ingredients to cook with. So I set out to try and find some of the vegetables from the mod pack because all we had at the moment was some cabbage and tomatoes. After not having much luck in finding anything in any of the villages I visited, I had to pivot. And with a quick search, I learned that I could make a bacon sandwich with the ingredients I had at home. The only thing I needed was some pork. After spotting some pigs on a hilltop, I got my pork chops and flew back home. Now to make the sandwich, you need to first place the pork on a cutting board and cut it into bacon. Then you cook that bacon up, combine it with some bread, cabbage, and tomatoes, and just like that, you've got yourself a delicious bacon sammy. This was actually so fun to do. I know there's a lot more recipes you can make with this, and honestly, I would love to explore this pack some more another time. On day 77, we were both done with some of the solo stuff we were working on and decided that we wanted to expand our base a little bit more. We had most of our essentials built by now and thought it could be cool to build something for the Twilight Portal and all the trophies we had collected. I know Blockdown lost all of his stuff and the Hydra still lives on in there to taunt us, 
but we genuinely had so much fun in there and we sort of wanted to honor that. So with that idea in mind, we hopped through the portal again to gather up some blocks from the forest that we can incorporate into our build. After that, we picked out a block palette and then we got to work. I built up the walls while Blockdown worked on the roof. Once the shape was laid down, I took to decorating the exterior while Blockdown worked on the interior. Since the twilight portal is a pond covered by flowers, I took that idea and just tried to make the outside look as overgrown as possible. So I added a bunch of planter boxes, leaves in the roof, and I placed flowers all around the build. This also helped blend the build into the theme we already had with the enchanting area. And I think this thing turned out really cool. This place looks so good, man. Thanks, I can't wait to see what you did on the inside. It's a kind of similar vibes, I think. Where'd you get this painting of us done? Did you commission this? Yeah, got um, Bob Dross to do it. Oh my gosh, his art is incredible. Wow. Oh, our sled. Yeah. So many good times. So many good times. Yep, just full of memories, right? All right, well, what's in here? Whoa! <laughs> I can't get off the sled. Are you literally okay, stuck? Up, 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 up. <laughs> Dude, this looks so good though. What the heck? What's this? What is this core memory that you had without me here? I don't remember this. Oh, this is your brain. What? How'd you get it? What? How'd you get it out? <laughs> is it gonna come back? <laughs> yeah, no, you're good, you're good. You know what? My brain doesn't look half bad. It's just a vine right now. What are you talking about? There's literally a floating thing here. Is that? <laughs> yeah, there is. It, it was what? a piece of, <laughs> it's a piece of wart block. <laughs> so, we have three trophies from the Twilight Forest. I feel like right? we should we should probably display these, right? Yeah, go for it. I mean, pick your spot. All right, let's do one here. Oh, <laughs> I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Look at it. There we go. Um, let's put the lich here, and then the cow can go right here. Hell yeah! That's not too bad. That's pretty cool. I mean, we still got we still got more to go. Obviously, we didn't get the uh, the hydra. We didn't talk about that. Though. We didn't talk about. That. Yeah, I feel like we need a redemption on that or something though. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be for another episode. I got to admit, I don't really fancy going back in there right now. No, I mean neither. I'm a little bit terrified of it to be honest, and a little bit salty. If we can hit one hundred thousand likes on this video, yeah, one hundred. We'll <laughs> one hundred thousand likes come on see that little button down there right below you i see it hit it anyway yeah day is done on day 81 we figured it had been a while since we did some overworld exploration so we set out in a direction we hadn't been yet to see what we could find the first thing we came across was a forest that had japanese maple logs so we collected some for building shortly after we found a little area that had some copper golems hanging out more importantly we learned that you could actually pick stuff up in this mod pack i honestly wish i had learned this like 30 days ago but you know what better late than never oh and yeah we also brought the copper golems back to life by scraping the rust off of them but honestly i was really stuck on being able to pick stuff up so i feel like i didn't care as much as i should have Right by the Copper Golem Monument was a village where we just ran around picking up as much stuff as we could. When we had enough of that, we flew around some more until we came across a weird looking mossy structure. This is kind of swag. Oh, there's definitely like a pile of creepers down there. <laughs> just gonna wait for them to swarm oh! you. <laughs> oh my God, they're everywhere. It's gonna be bad. Oh my it's God. It's gonna be so bad. <laughs> I can see little bits of stuff oh. flying everywhere. Why did you do that? Someone's gonna be fine. I think we're good. Ooh, chests. Oh, oh, oh my good. gosh, they're hiding in the wall still. Or mending book. After gathering all the loot and spore blossoms we could find, we head on out. On day 82, we continued flying around to see what else was around us. We found this giant pumpkin biome that had a village with a bunch of little pumpkin people living in it, but not much else. I couldn't tell if I thought they were kind of cute or kind of creepy. To be honest, I'm still undecided on that one. After that, we made our way over to the tundra again because I wanted to start collecting rabbit fur to make this very special armor. You'll see in a bit as to why I was so set on getting this. But while we were doing that, we came across an ice temple. Let's go in and loot it. Oh, you are literally going to set off. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Whatever loot was there was gone now. <laughs> Bro, you're so lucky you got out of there. Oh my God. Somebody was shooting at us. What? Where are they coming from? What? Oh my God. It's like frozen skellies, dude. The loot is gone. Oh, there's one of the magic men. Oh God. Oh God. Yep. See ya. I am frozen in the air. I might die. Please, please. Oh God. This is bad. I don't want to die, man. I don't want to die. This is not cool. How is this still going on? Oh. On day 83, we were back home and I crafted probably the best thing you could ever make in this mod pack. Oh my God, look at me. 
Oh, this is the best thing ever. I wanted to enchant the fur armor, but I also lost a bunch of levels when I died. So I had to go back to the Enderman farm to gather some XP. When I got home, I enchanted my fur armor with the finest enchantments worthy to be on it. And here I am, probably looking the most slick I ever will in this game. <laughs> On day 84, we both thought our base was coming together, but we realized neither of us actually had our own places to live or sleep. So over the next few days, we went our own ways to focus on that. I went off exploring for a bit to collect a bunch of resources for this build. I didn't have a whole plan in mind, I just know I wanted to use brick as one of the building blocks. So once I got back from resource collecting, I spent the next few days tossing up a build that was suitable for a home. And I think it looks super cute! It's the perfect place to catch some rest, that's for sure. And with that, we were on to day 89. Seeing how much our builds transformed the area, we thought it would be a good idea to finally build up a monument for our dragon egg. That was an achievement worthy to be displayed after all. So for the next couple days, we gathered up some blocks from the end to build the monument with. Once we had gotten enough materials to work with, we thought it would be cool to build the dragon egg nested above a pond made out of the blocks from the end. And I think this one turned out pretty cool as well. And that brought us to day 91, where we thought to do the same thing with our waystone as it had been sitting there all sad at the front of our base. We decided to use deep slate because we had so much from the caves. So we worked on building up a platform for this thing. And yeah, I think this one ended up looking pretty cool too. So with all of this progress done on our base, we were on to day 92. Drift. Yep. We're uh, coming to the end of the 100 days. Are we on day 92? Day yeah, 92? something like that. 92, I think. I've had a lot of fun so far. Me too. This is a, this has just been great. There is one problem, though. Yep. That Hydra mm. stole all my stuff. Yeah. He still has it. And he's still out there breathing. Yeah, like really breathing because there's three heads. Like, that's a lot of breath. Yeah, I know. And, uh, well, he shouldn't breathe no. anymore. No, I agree. He, I think he needs to pay. I think he does need to pay. I want revenge. Well, you know where the portal is. What, you're not coming with me? Well, I am, yeah. But I was just trying to be dramatic. Was that dramatic oh, okay. enough? But before we go to the portal, I actually really need some food and stuff. So can we do that first? Yeah, I mean, I've only got like 16 steaks, so... Okay, I know Probably we're I know we're that. hungry for revenge, but that will not satiate the hunger that I actually have. I'm actually starving right now, so let's go get some food. So with this epic plan in mind, we went off collecting some food to fuel our redemption arc. Except I barely got any because I took looting off of my sword. Yeah. Drift. Yes. <laughs> you got a, you got a sign on your face. Oh no, it's on you. Okay, okay, okay. Here's your steak. Here's your steak. A whole stop, stack. stop. I was just cooking some. What? Well, How did I only got like three? It's because I took looting off my sword. I deserve that. Oh. You do. Oh, okay. Imagine taking looting off your sword. Off to the portal. Yeah. I mean, first time we actually get to use this build. Right? Handshake poster. Oh, Can we us. shake hands in front of the handshake yeah, poster? Yeah, obviously. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. There we go. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. The map. The, this is actually the map that we need? I don't see anything there. Just punch it. Oh, there you go. okay. There it is. Whew. All right. See you in there. All right. See you. Good luck. Oh, I'm in. That thing is northeast, I'm pretty sure. So let's go, I think, this way. So with a lot more confidence and nothing left to lose, well, except we had everything to lose again, including our already bruised egos, we were off to settle things once and for all with the Hydra. You ready, buddy? Yeah. Okay, not great, not great, not great, but we're, we're, we're doing this, we're doing this. Oh! <laughs> oh, we must be doing something wrong. I wonder if there's like a trick. Oh god, I hit him with a steak. Oh, that actually does quite a bit of damage. Does it? And his mouth's open, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Whoa, oh, you got oh, one of his heads! heads. Dead. Oh my gosh, we're doing it, we're doing it! Oh, no, Wait. we respawned! Oh, he's got so many heads now! Oh, I got one, I got one. Dude, we're almost there. Yes! Oh, oh my god! One more, one more, one more! One more good one! Come on! Die! Lockdown, this is yours! Yes! 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 We did it! We did it! Yes! That's right. Oh my god! That's right. You didn't take my stuff! Oh my god. Yo. Take that trophy. That is yours, dude. I'm drinking this blood. I am drinking it. Wait. I can't drink I it. I can't drink it either. Twilight Forest, more like try better next time, Forest. Yeah! I'm going home. Are we ready? Okay, I'm Count ready. Count me down. 
dramatically. And a five, and a four, and a three, and a two, and a one. Mm-hmm. Yeah! Hey. <laughs> oh, we did it. We did it. I guess uh, we should probably store this fiery blood. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows if we're going to need it again? Because we might need it for 200 days if you like and subscribe right now. 100,000 likes, everyone. And I need to reach 1 billion subscribers by the end of the year. And we'll make a 200 days better Minecraft. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> oh, you shut me in. <laughs> On day 94, we decided we should actually have a proper spot for our nether portal. So we hopped back into the portal to gather up some blocks for the build. Although, right off the bat, we ended up getting pretty distracted. Whoa. I had come across something called a citadel. Even though it was probably extremely deadly, I just had to see what was inside. Oh my god. Oh, he multiplies. Whoa. He multiplies. Ooh, I don't know about this one. Oh, oh god. Oh, you got it! <laughs> Let's go! What is it? What's the loot? Wildfire crown fragment. We have five of them. We can make a wildfire crown. That's and we've sick. Got four. And we've got four. Oh, jeez. Are you got loot in here, then? There's got to be some loot. Oh! Where'd you go? Down? There's going to be... Yeah. Oh, bro. Inside. That looks hairy. That looks hairy. Oh, God. Once we had gotten rid of the wither skellies, we looted up the place. We got two skulls from that and only needed one more to spawn the wither. So we did the most senseless thing and decided to find one more skull. Why? I don't know. Clearly we were still riding the thrill of beating the Hydra, cause I can't explain any other reason why we did this if I'm honest. On our way out of the Citadel, we spotted a tower close by that had a really cool Piglin statue. We ended up taking it because we thought it would look really cool for our build. After that, we made our way back to the fortress we had found earlier to get our last Wither Skull. And I've gotta be honest, this one was kinda up to block down cause, you know, I took looting off of my sword. Once we had gotten our last skull, we dipped from the nether. Once we were back in the overworld, being the two foolish people we are, we set off to the caves to summon the wither. Run. Why is it gone dark? Ah! Oops, sorry. <sighs> Bro, we can do this easy, easy. Oh god, he's actually flipping out. Oh god, oh god, I might die, I might die. Dude, he's like half, he's like half. So easy, easy. Get so, out of here, man. So easy, dude. Try harder. Oh, dude, he's almost dead, he's almost dead. Let's get him, let's Please. get him. I'm yeah. open. <laughs> I'm open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One and a half hearts. Oh, oh, did you get with a star? Oh, I did. I got the star. Oh, God. I got the star. Dude, you have no boots. Look at your little shoes. <laughs> you have no boots. <laughs> So after just casually defeating the Wither, we head back home and spent the rest of day 96 building the nether portal we were supposed to make before getting distracted. With all the fiery blocks and gold, this thing turned out really cool looking. Day 97 rolled around and we wanted to clean up a few more things around our base. So the next thing on our list was to give the Paradise Lost Portal a better home. We hopped into the portal and spent the day exploring for blocks. It was all pretty much the same thing over and over, but I did manage to grab some of what was there. Day 98, we built up the portal by the storage house and we basically just set out to make it look really overgrown and old. And here it is. I think this one turned out really nice as well. Also, we look so cool in these fursuits. And finally, we had made it to day 99, our second last day. With everything else done, we decided to spend the day cleaning up the base as much as we could. I added some more fields and planted some more flowers around the base, while Blockdown planted all of the saplings that we found over the course of our journeys. Once that was all done, I went home and had one final last sleep in my bed. And with that, we are at day 100. Drift. Dude, we did it. Day 100, let's go. Let's go. Oh, look at everything we accomplished. I know, and I think it all started with this tower. Right? Now we've got like a whole village. This looks awesome. Yeah, for real. I mean like, man, not even just the village, everything that we accomplished, I couldn't have done any of this without you. Yeah, I mean, I'd say the same, but it's not true. Um, That's all yeah, rude, but... Okay, well, yeah, well, it is the truth, though. I'll accept that. I mean, also, the respawns. The respawns really did help me out there. But, yeah, look at everything we've done. I'm so proud of this. I know. Five million likes and we'll do another 100 days. 100,000 billion likes and we'll do it again. Honestly, I'll do this. If you just let us know that you enjoyed this video and we will absolutely do one again because we had so much fun. And I, I really want to wear this suit again. I feel so fancy right now. The fanciest I've ever felt. And I just, I, you know what? Despite, despite all of us, despite us, you know, just having some goofs and stuff. I had such a fun time with you, dude. Yeah, we had a great time. It was good. Yeah. I want to do it again. So this is day 100. And as you can see, I think we're pretty much complete with everything that we've got. We've got a fully sustainable base 
And I think that's all that really needs to be said. So with 100 days done, I would just like to say how much fun I had on this journey. The Better Minecraft mod pack had so many cool surprises around every corner, but most importantly, I'm so glad I was able to do this with a good friend by my side. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing because it really helps out the channel. And definitely make sure you go check out Blockdown's channel as well. And with all of that, I'll catch you all again soon.